What we have is Gen Z seeing videos of what's going on. This right here, like 11,000 dead kids starving and depriving people of water, food and medicine whilst not allowing them to leave a space and bombing them. Not complicated, not complicated at all. Israel has done a lot of window dressing, I think, when it comes to the issue of sort of representing itself as sort of this great democracy in the Middle East. The reality is that it's a brutal military occupation of the Palestinian people. Palestine means so many things to me. I grew up in a household where my mom, who is Irish, was a campaigner for Palestinian rights. It's uh, given that the Palestine liberation movement is a parallel liberation movement to that of other former colonized peoples, including the Irish. I also uh, had the real privilege and honor of living in Al Quds, in Beit Hanina, uh, for just under a year when I was 21. I was taken in by Palestinians like family. I was living in Beit Hanina but I was working in the West Bank. Uh, apartheid is the system that governs Israel and the occupied Palestinian territories. So, I, of course, first-hand experience of, you know, daily checkpoints, a journey that should take 20 minutes, taking four hours of violent interrogations, of daily guns in your faces, of uh, people being shot, of people being killed, of people being tortured, of people being sexually assaulted in prison. Judaism is, uh, you know, an ancient uh, religion. It's an Abrahamic religion. It shares the same roots as Christianity and Islam. Zionism is a nationalist political movement that emerges at the end of the uh, 19th century and early 20th century. It's really just the actualization of uh, a sort of neo-colonial project that was steeped in sort of the political dynamics of that era where nationalism was on the rise. Europe had been going through a period, a sustained period of persecution of Jews. And uh, in fact, I think in many ways you could argue that the idea of creating a state that they could ship all Jews off to was really in many ways the culmination of European anti-Semitism meeting a sort of rabid form of nationalism. What's incredible also about this wave of activism that we're seeing is that at the forefront of all of the protests have been coalitions of Jewish communities. You know, we saw the Jewish elders handcuffing themselves to the White House gates. We see Jewish Voices for Peace, you know, shutting down motorways and at the front of all of these protests and sort of actively wanting to say, you know, this cannot be said to be happening in our name. I have seen a Jewish woman that I know very closely in tears over the use of Jewish symbolism in the assault on Gaza. She was so upset to see a menorah, which is such a beautiful symbol of peace in the Jewish religion, being used as an instrument and a symbol of ethnic cleansing in Gaza.
Israel has done a lot of window dressing, I think, when it comes to the issue of sort of representing itself as sort of this great democracy in the Middle East. The reality is that it's a brutal military occupation of the Palestinian people. If you listen to Professor Avi Shleim, who was one of my professors at Oxford, who uh, is himself Israeli, um, he's written about how as a Sephardic Jew, so what he would refer to as an Arab Jew, he knew early on when he moved to Israel that it was never designed for Sephardic Jews. It was never designed for Arab Jews who were actually treated as a lower class. Many people don't realize that there are several tiers of citizens within Israel itself. So you can have Palestinians who have Israeli ID, who are second class citizens, who are not entitled to the same freedoms and live under a different set of laws and restrictions. And we see that, of course, right now in Israel, where, of course, Palestinians who live within Israel, you know, are under a, an acute amount of pressure. They are arrested for posting any form of solidarity with what's going on in Gaza. Most are living in absolute fear of something as basic as, you know, reposting a video of what What's happening or even posting a Palestine flag. These are all instances that we have seen Palestinians who technically live within Israel and should be entitled to the same rights as Israelis being persecuted within the state of Israel itself. We also have, of course, statements by multiple Israeli politicians, including, of course, by um, the Israeli Prime Minister himself, Benjamin Netanyahu, who in 2019 very clearly stated that Israel isn't a state for all people, it's a state for the Jews. Built into that is a hierarchy of human value, which is otherwise known as racism. But there are multiple human rights organizations who have, over the years, tracked these. You know, Amnesty's done an extensive report on the apartheid regime that uh, is uh, in existence in Israel, B'Tselem, Human Rights Watch, who have done, you know, documented the inequalities in treatment between Jews and Arabs within the state of Israel without us even going beyond that to the treatment of the occupied people in the occupied territories. When you start to look at the figures of prosecution of the settlers, these Jewish settlers who are illegal in terms of their presence in the occupied territories who should be reprimanded, there's a less than 3% conviction rate of those assaults on Palestinians and Palestinian communities. So overall, when you start to look at the way that the state operates, it clearly operates according to a dual justice model, which we would call apartheid because it's based on a racial distinction What is the classic argument that we have heard in the mainstream media for generations now? It's just complicated. It's just, it's just so unbelievably complicated. Um, in fact, you should stay out of it because that's how complicated it is. And then what we have is Gen Z seeing videos of what's going on and just saying, yeah, we're not saying some of this isn't complicated, but this right here, like 11,000 dead kids, not complicated, not complicated. Starving and depriving people of water, food and medicine whilst not allowing them to leave a space and bombing them, not complicated, not complicated at all. And so we've seen them harness the best of what they do, which is humor, sarcasm, parody, in service to almost, I think, a cultural backlash against our elders who have for so long tried to like ring fence this issue as somehow being so difficult to understand that, you know, you little young people, don't worry your head with it. No, no, do worry your head with it. It's not that complicated. It's wrong. You guys got it. They don't.